What up, Internet? I am the PC Goblin. And today we're going to be taking the EKAIO and shoving it inside my system like I talked about in the last video. We've already unboxed it. So if you want to know what's inside of this, check out my other video so you can see what's inside. Then come back to this so you can see what it's like installing it, how well it performs, and you know everything else that's going to be inside this video. But let's go ahead and get this installed already and see just what it looks like when it's actually installed. All right, so I just finished installing the AIO, or so it looks like, and I ran tests with the X62 and the EKAIO. And before I get into those results, let's talk a little bit about the installation process and what all that was like. So overall, this is actually fairly easy to install. I do think it's a little bit harder to install than other AIOs that I've done, but it's not much. It's very little. Like having to screw on the brackets so you could screw it down onto the motherboard to clamp down onto the processor, that that was a little bit more complicated, but it wasn't hard. It was just more that I had to do. Then on the plus side, all the other AIOs that I've used have had USB cables that you plug into it with proprietary connectors on the pump head. And then that runs out into the USB header on the bottom of your motherboard or somewhere on your motherboard. And that's so you can control it you know, from inside of Windows, and that's great, works really well. But this is taking more of the custom loop aspect of how to control things. So what you do is you plug the pump cable into the CPU 
fan header on your motherboard. And then inside the BIOS, you know, you set up the speeds on how you want it to react or whatever. So I set it to go off of the CPU temperature and then gradually went up from 15%, you know, at the base speed. And then at about whatever the max temperature was, I think it was 80 C, it would only be 70%. And then it just gradually increased over like every 10 degrees. And it's working great with those settings. It, you know, with your motherboard, it may vary, but that's how I have it set up. And then moving on to the fans and radiator installation, that was more or less straightforward. I ran the cables coming off of the fans into this fan splitter that this came with, and then I plugged that into the other optional CPU header on my motherboard. So both things for the AIO are going into the CPU connectors or the CPU fan headers on my motherboard. And then for the fans, I have them set up very quietly through most of the temperature range. I think at about 80 C it ramps up to 100%, but up until then, it's more or less like 10%, like every 10 degrees. And then as for the DRGB, I really, really love that. So I took all of the DRGB cables off the pump and the fans. And on my case, the Fantex Evolve X, it's got a DRGB cable that comes out of that for you to plug other stuff into or to plug into your motherboard. And I started with all the fans first, so I plugged those in and daisy chained them off of each other. And then I plugged the pump into that. And so they're all daisy chained together and they're all able to use the controls off of my case, which you saw. So everything that I do with the case, all the lighting's in sync, it's all the same colors, it's all doing the same thing and it looks really, really good. So for me, with the Fantex Evolve X, and all the DRGB, I love it. I love DRGB, that's really, really cool. That's the first time I've ever had, you know, RGB fans inside a case, a case with RGB and you know everything else that I've got inside that. But anyways, going on to actual performance of this, it's really, really quiet. I don't hear this, whereas I did hear my X62 all the time and I had really, really good fans attached to my X62. I had Corsair maglevs attached to that, so they should have been really quiet pu pushing air through or pulling air through and you know doing a better job of it than the fans that come with this but if we look at the testing results when the x62 was attached to it it just couldn't keep my processor cold it just instantly ramped up to above 100 when i started the test and i really wasn't able to do any testing because of how hot it got with the x62 and it wasn't installed improperly when i first built this the temperatures were really hot or at least a lot more than i was used to so i went back made sure everything was put on right used better thermal paste spread the thermal paste as evenly as I could, then clamped it down, didn't matter. Didn't make any change with the temperature, so it's performing exactly how it's supposed to. But with the EK AIO attached to it, I saw at least a 10 degree drop, and it never really went above 90 degrees. Pretty much everything, it allowed me to test multiple benchmarks with Geekbench, which was really cool. It wasn't super loud, it was loud because it was pushing 100% on the fans and whatnot, so that kind of sucked. But under extreme conditions, it was able to keep my processor more or less at a safe temperature and usable. And the cool thing about that is, is the testing that it was pushing my CPU with, normally, like when you're actually using that workload, the CPU actually can downclock the speed on the CPU to make it a little bit cooler because those instruction sets are so intense and get so, so hot on the CPU where that was not happening in, in the benchmarks. It ran it at full speed at 4.8 gigahertz through everything. And with the exact same settings, overclock settings and everything, the EKAIO, you know, it could actually let you do those benchmarks without you destroying your CPU really quick. So for me, that's a huge win. The actual usage of it every day, I barely ever hear it do anything. It's super quiet with how I have it set up. It keeps my processor cool. I never see it go really all that hot when I'm gaming or anything else. So it's it's doing really good. In fact, I was able to actually overclock it up to five gigahertz to use in my daily life because it keeps it that cool. I could never do that with the X62. Five gigahertz was just out of range and even 4.9 was just too far. So the EK AIO is doing a really, really good job for me. Now I know these tests were kind of limited because you know, it's only one cooler versus another cooler, and it's a 280 versus a 360. So the 280 was already at a bit of a downside, but there's really, there shouldn't be a whole lot of difference between what a 280 can do and a 360. The 360 has obviously got more cooling capacity, but I think it's only about a 9% difference. So I, I wouldn't expect it to make that kind of difference. So while working on this and doing my stuff with the AIO, I saw another video where a guy was testing it against Krakens and Corsair and a bunch of different AIOs and his results were showing that this was doing far worse 
than all the other stuff for the most part. And I think the reason for that is because he didn't have the pump plugged into the fan header for the CPU on its own doing its own thing. His test made sense, but I think he just had it configured in a way that really wasn't letting it do its thing. So I'm gonna be doing another video where I do much more testing on it in the near future. So I'm gonna be testing it against a 7700K that's been delitted, and obviously my 9800X. And then with those two processors, I'm gonna be testing it with an X72, so a 360 rad, the EKAIO obviously, which is a 360 rad, which we already know. And then the X62, which is a 280 rad. So I'm looking forward to see just how it compares against those with even more situations going around. Cause now we're gonna be testing it on a more mainstream chip that doesn't get nearly as hot as a 9800X. In fact, I have that 7700 100k overclocked to 5.2 gigahertz 5.1 or 5.2 gigahertz with the x72 and it never goes above 62 or 63c and that's even under like advanced workloads so compressing video and whatnot just it stays at that never gets hotter so look out for my upcoming video where i test the ekio against you know more aios and with more cpu so we can get a better idea of what it can do and hopefully you guys liked this video. And if you did, go ahead and hit that like button. If you didn't, well, you know what to do. And hopefully you wanna see more of my stuff, including that upcoming video. So you'll hit that subscribe button. And thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.